you can take these birds down, take your time, uh, remove the skin, and downsize your bird to where you have to put it in luggage or small cooler to get it back home. And also these steps can be used if you're traveling to Mexico for oscillated turkeys or ghouled turkeys. Watch our procedure, take it with you, download it, and you'll have a step-by-step -step instructional guide on how to transport your turkeys back when you go on a hunting trip. We've got a basic scalpel with a number 10 blade, but the Havilon has interchangeable blades. You can get those at many of your uh, you know, Bass Pro, Gander Mountain, Cabela's. That's what I recommend to skin with because once the blade gets dull, you take it off, throw it away. Uh, also a good pair of shears, good to uh, for disconnecting bones. So, and carry you some parachute cord or some kind of small rope because this is important if you need to hang the bird. Paper towel wrapped around the head, plastic bag over it, and a rubber band to keep it from bleeding. Now, if the bird's been sitting out or in a refrigeration for overnight, I want to take and loosen the bird up because they get stiff. So we're going to take and open these wings up. So we can get in there to separate that from the bird. And the legs, kind of give them a little bit of a massage there. And we've come up with a, a different way of skinning and this works really good. It's very easy. What we're gonna do is take this drumstick. You can see how it connects up here to what I call the flank feathers that come over the drum. We're gonna make a complete perfect circle cut around this drumstick. Then we're gonna make an incision from drum to drum. It's called the sock method. This is all gonna be covered up during the mounting process. If you'd like to, you can spray a little water on the plumage. If you don't have water, don't worry about it, but you can see that natural area right there. It's just basic skin. We'll go right above that seam on the flank. It don't matter if you cut a couple of the feathers off, it's gonna be okay. You just follow that around the drum. And if you cut through a feather, it's okay. Now we've removed that. That whole section is cut around. We'll just pull that down out of the way. We're going to do that with a second drum now. This is an area that will not be seen. Just trying to get this bird reduced for transport. We used to cut them on the inside of the legs, but now we found a better way. We call it the sock method. We eliminate our seam. We used to cut from here to here and we'd have to sew it. So now we do it differently. It's easier on you guys when you are trying to get your bird skin. You don't have to skin it all the way down just yet, but gets it out of the way. So now we have created an area in between each leg. And I'm pulling that skin up right there. These are called rose cutting knives, which any knife will work, your scalpel will work. But I just take this knife and what I'm doing is I'm inserting it right under that skin. I'm coming out the other side right there, see that? straight up like that and that opens my incision and everything begins to be exposed at that point when i reattach this for mounting later i come here and i can sew that back together or attach it some other way but this opens up our bird to where we can get the skin removed i want to stress right here that that cut that we made is from here over to here not from here down to here you can see the exposure here. Circled around the leg drum, and then right across the keel, you can feel that knot. I'm gonna start peeling this back toward the chest. You just take your scalpel, your Havilon knife, and cut the connective tissue. Now, putting tension on the skin helps you cut. Like if you just leave it like that and try to cut, you're gonna cut holes in the skin. So you wanna pull this skin with tension on it and that helps you to 
successfully remove the skin and re release that connective tissue. We're gonna do the same thing going back down towards the tail area. And this is where it gets a little more difficult for people. See, I'm pulling that skin, cutting that tissue. If someone can help you do this, it's a plus. Like just someone to hold that leg this direction. I've got it kind of tucked under my armpit here and I'm pulling that skin. If it's a fresh turkey, you're gonna have a lot of blood loss. I put this bird in the refrigerator and it coagulates the blood and makes it a little bit easier to skin the next day. The main areas you don't wanna cut holes is the main feather tracks and I'll kind of go over that you cut a little hole on the flank or the side it's not the end of the world so don't stress out about it right now i'm going to put this bird on its chest and continue skinning towards the vent we're going to cut through that vent we're going to watch this little area right here this is where it kind of gets a little difficult skin gets thin and tie it against the bird. Cut right through that vent. If you cut here, if you cut holes, it's not the end of the world again. Pushing that tail down, creating pressure. So I kind of have to think about how that skin wraps around the tail. Now we've reached the tail. And what you will do at this point, that's that tail bone right there. See where it is? I take my shears, where that tail is, and cut right through it. Release that bone. careful here because you'll cut that back skin. You gotta angle it back down toward the back with your scalpel or your very sharp knife. Never try to skin one with a dull knife. It's okay if you leave some meat on there. We'll get that off later. Okay, and we've successfully gone around the tail. We cut it loose. If you don't have a way to hang it, you can continue to skin it just like this by pushing these, the skin back and releasing that connective tissue. This track right here is very important. That's the saddle area on the turkey. If you cut holes here and here, it's not that big a deal. If you cut holes through here, it can be more problematic. It's not, as, again, the end of the world, but if we can eliminate cutting holes here, we're gonna have a better turkey mount or it's gonna be less stress on the taxidermist. All right, at this point, we're gonna to move towards a, a place to hang this bird and continue to skin it out. I'm gonna go over his feet with a slip, slip knot, and hang him. If you've got a tree or if you're in a barn, you know, over a nail or a rafter. So what this does is it gets it off of a table or the back of a pickup truck or a surface to where you're grinding these feathers into the table. So you can see that the wings are free. I've got a garbage can underneath. Let's continue with this pressure. taking the skin down off the back and around the sides. When you get around to this back side, you can use your fingers to really skin this thing. See how this pulls? And then we're gonna extend our wings down, hyperextend the wings. 
Now this is the area you're gonna run into blood issues with if it's a fresh turkey. The wing pit area is critical. So you wanna take your time working around these wings. Continue rotating your bird and freeing up the skin. And this is another area here that if you can eliminate holes would be great because that's that main breast feather track. You can get a little bit of confusion with what is skin and what's this connective tissue. So cut deeper, leave more tissue. Now we've reached the wing area. You wanna cut really deep right here into the joint for the knife. You're gonna go in between the ball joint where the humerus bone goes into the shoulder and disconnect that joint. Not cutting through here on the bone, but just popping that joint in too. Once you free that up and you continue on, easily cutting through that muscle till you get back to the skin. This is an area that gets a little tricky, but if you take your time, you can, you can accomplish it. Hyper extend that and go in there really deep. Put some pressure on that joint and it'll pop right off. Back in with a scalpel, small strategic cuts. And that has removed the wings. And then we'll move on to taking the neck off. What I do is I take a stack of paper towels, cut a lot of these, you know, just tear them off. And I'm gonna place them on this fatty area. And if you've got someone that's helping you, just have them standing there with these. And as that blood starts to come out, just keep piling these things on here. We're gonna continue cutting through the connective tissue. The more you cut this direction, the better. If you cut downward, you're gonna cut skin. What you wanna do is pull this as far forward as you possibly can. I keep putting these paper towels on here to catch that blood. At this point, we'll take these scissors, make this cut right here, and then pull the skin out of the way. And then just let your bird drain. Once it stops bleeding, then you can take and remove the breast meat. Just cut that off and we'll remove the skin. We'll get it aside, clean it up, and get it ready to bag. We've made the cut. I'm going to grab that head. Reinvert that skin just like this. Now we reduce the size of the bird for transport. If it's still bloody on the inside, you can take some more paper towels and place them up inside the, the cavity to absorb moisture. If you're, if you're out in the Midwest and you don't have refrigeration, what I recommend doing is getting some standard table salt. Um, we use non iodized salt. Shake that on the inside, get a good coating on the wings and the, and the interior of the bird up into the chest, and then we'll package it. And you can travel with it, you know, cool for a couple of days and you're not gonna have any problems with your bird. So we're gonna show you how to remove these legs. You don't wanna take this drumstick meat off, you don't have to. But what we're going to do is we're gonna hyper extend this thigh, open it up, and that gives us access to this bone right here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna disjoint this with a knife. Just pop it, use your shears, and you've got the leg removed. Do the opposite leg, hyper extend, cut through to the joint, hyper extend it. Remove the second leg. So we got both those removed. You can simply package them with the drumsticks on them. If you want to roll this on down and cut this meat off, you can. If you're in, you know, in a jungle environment, hunting isolated turkeys, of course, you want to skin this all the way down to the heel, salt the interior, and get all of the drum meat out. I want to show you guys if you're in Mexico hunting turkeys in the jungle or ghouls, how to invert these wings if you need to, if they have to salt them and leave them. There's a little hook right here on the the ball joint on the humerus that goes up in there. 
what I've got is if you don't have a, if you've got a rope, you can just tie it around it, but I kind of hooked that in that little slot. What we're trying to accomplish is to get some tension on this wing to where we can use our scalpel or Havilon, whatever it is we've got to uh, skin the meat down the humerus so we can salt the skin. Take your time where you don't cut holes. Once you get it to the elbow, you take your other knife or your scalpel and remove this meat right here. Cut these tendons real close. Lay this off of here. You can work a little bit more off, but once you do that, you can really get the salt around here. Again, if you're in the jungle and you're hunting an oscillated turkey, we do not use the real head because it dries up and it does not have a good result as, as a freeze dried product. So what I want you to do is supervise the skinning or if you're skinning yourself, I want you to cut the head off right here, okay? Right below where the head meets the neck. Just chop that off and then they will skin this all the way completely off the neck and it will reinvert and you can salt it easily. But just one cut right here, leave all this skin on here and salt that for preparation. It's common when you're skinning these birds that you'll get a lot of blood sometimes on the wings and on the bird. What I recommend doing is once you get the skin removed, is just take a water hose or some water and just hose the blood off. It's okay if you get the bird wet and then bag it up for packaging. At this stage in the game, we're gonna package this nicely in a plastic bag for transportation. Couple of things you don't want to do. You don't want to use a pantyhose ever. You don't want to use newspaper ever. All we're going to use is a plastic bag. You can use a white plastic bag or you can use a heavy duty black garbage bag. We're going to take each leg, place it up inside the body cavity like that. Just push it up in there into the neck. We're going to push this tail up into the body cavity. Put this wing over this way and this wing over that way. Grab the bird if you've got someone to help you. You open the bag, head first, everything together. Shape of the bird. You want to tighten it up a little bit. We've already got our tag made for transportation. You got access to a freezer. Now's the time to put it in a freezer. If you can get a good hard freeze on your bird before you bring it back, that's even better. You can salt the bird. What I'll do is I'll take my cooler and fill it halfway up with ice, no water, and just sit the birds on top of it. And I'm telling you, they'll last for days that way. Uh, keep them separated from the ice, keep the water drained off of it. You can go a week with a salted skin or even longer. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll go a little bit more in depth. People that are traveling uh, into the jungles or for Gould's turkeys on removing the meat from the wing.